So I put up a picture recently of an outfit I made for my friend's PhD defense. I'll drop the picture somewhere on the screen. And a couple of you requested for a tutorial. And I made a comment that I was going to teach how to recreate the design. And I'm here to fulfill my promise. My name is Kemi Morogbe. In case you are new here, please join the farm by subscribing. Thank you. Now let's get on to analyzing the design. One, it is a nudge collar wrap dress. So the dress has a half cut here. So we have the bodies and then we have the skirt. I have a tutorial already on the channel on how to draft a basic skirt pattern. Please go ahead and check it. I'll probably drop the link in the description box. And also there is a peplum attachment here. And I remember when I was making that design, I actually recorded a tutorial for that peplum. It's an, a kind of unique peplum. I paired it with a handkerchief flare and yeah, so the tutorial is already on the channel. Now I'm just going to focus on the wrap notch color in this video. Let's go ahead and do this. We are starting with the pattern drafting. By the way, if you like my dress, pom, 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 pom. there's a tutorial for this dress on the channel. Guys, we have so many tutorials. Why are you guys not watching? Why? So there's a tutorial for this dress on the channel already. You may want to give it a look. I'll drop the link in the description box. Let's get on to work. Here is the basic bodies we'll be using for this class. This is the front and the back. So because the front is asymmetrical, I just drafted the pattern on one side with the center front on fold and now I traced it onto the other side so that we can have a full bodies. Now let's focus on the front pattern because that is where bulk of the work lies. And first you have to decide on where you want the overlapping neckline to get to. I have decided to just work with the edge here for mine. You can make your wrap have like a bit of the other side. I think you understand what I mean later on if you don't. I need to create a slanted line from that point to the neckline through the depth I want. So you can measure the depth of the neckline you want, but I'm not using that. I just want to create a slanted line. Let me make this using my pencil because um, that would just make it easier for me to clean off if I don't like what I get. So, okay, perfect. This one is passing through the dart line. Does not mean that yours must pass through the dart line though. That's not what it means. Now, note that for this type of color, you are basically creating it. So it does not mean that yours has to be exactly like this. This idea can help you, you know, play around with your color and all that. But I'll try to be as, I don't know, I want to call it dramatic. So that when I say come down by two inches, come to the side by, you think it's technical. No, it's not really technical. I'm just creating something. And you don't have to use that exact measurement for yours. But that's why you should practice, play around with different measurements and see the one you like best. This is two inches, so I'm creating like an extension from here, two inches as well. And I'll just come down by half an inch from here. You can make it one inch if you want the color to be deeper and all that. What I'm trying to do is create a curve and blend it outward, out of my original color. And another thing you, you can actually do, just make use of a straight line, it does not even have to be a curve. So I can take the two inches down here, and from this point I say, okay, I want my color to start here, and that is it. It does not have to be a curve. So I'll position this here, and I'll just draw a line perpendicular to this middle line. So from this point, what I did is to just measure the distance between here, here, and here, here, with the shape of your color. But this tutorial will give you the basics you need to create this type of color. So what I did for mine is I measured the same two inches here. I measured it downward and I want my color to start from that point. So I will create like a dotted straight line. The way I will know this is actually straight is when it is perpendicular to this one. So here is straight. But I don't still want to make it straight like this. Okay, I want it to 
like slants downward a little bit so i'll mark half an inch downward for that reason that's the reason why i made use of a dotted line and i want my notch to be two inches wide so i'm marking half an inch downward from this point i don't trust marked here so from this point you can then create like the shape of your collar so for mine I'm making use of this side of my curve and I'll just position it this way it does not have to be slightly curvy like this it can still be a straight one but for this particular one I'm just making it slanted now for the dots at the side here we won't be using it but I'm going to extend this upward and close up this that because of the color I can't you know close it up from here I'm going to extend this line upward and when we cut it out we'll close up this that for this that we are going to be transferring it to the shoulder note that there are some ruffles along the shoulder we may not create ruffles here but if you need ruffles in your own you can go ahead and add the ruffles along the dark line I have a similar tutorial where I inputted something like that along the shoulder that line but one of our main concerns here is this color so for this because we have created a shoulder that measure halfway here and mark the position of your shoulder that connected to the bust point okay so we want to create the other side of the notch just the same way i have two inches here i want to create the notch in a way that the distance between the two notches is one or even 1.5 let's make it 1.5 and it is still the same width note that like i mentioned that this this are just like guides you can basically make your color however you want it so i have the other side of my notch and now we have to create the collar to create this collar we need to extend the neckline upward first you start by measuring the back neckline and here i got four inches and so i'll extend the front neckline by that four inches so at this line i'll draw a perpendicular line here it must be perpendicular that's 90 degree to what you have here okay 90 degree this way okay so and now you have to decide on the weight of the collar you want remember that it's going to be folded this way so you may not want it to be too small like four let's make it of four inches for this so four inches and that will be the height or the length of the collar from this side and then now we'll decide on the shape of the collar let's make use of a slight curve here So now we have a pattern for our collar. It extends this way. So here is our collar. Now you have to label your collar so you don't, you know, make a mistake with it. Here is the center, right? And it is unfold, but it doesn't have to be unfold anyway. You can still have two separate pieces. And from here, also remember to put notches here. So here indicates the shoulder line. So when you're sewing, you know that this part should align with the shoulder line. And um, on the main fabric as well, you may want to notch here, you know, especially because this part isn't very sharp. You know, it's not very obvious that this is a separate line. So you may want to notch this so that you know exactly where your collar is supposed to end on the outfit now we are cutting out this part separately and cutting the other part out separately let's and we'll now cut this lapel because this is actually a lapel now mine is two inches yours can be more than this if that's what 
you want so just remember that i'm trying to emphasize the fact that you don't have to try to recreate this exactly this is just a guide so now we want to close up this that like i said that we won't be using this that now you have two options either when you are drafting your basic pattern you leave your dart out here but since i already have that on both sides i'm just going to extend the dart leg upward and you know extend the dart line and the dart leg upward and then we'll close it up this way Next, I want to transfer the bust dart to the shoulder, so I'll split here up and close up. In fact, let's just split, open up the dart. Now we can close it up. Okay, so these are the pieces for the front now onto the back there's really not much work to be done on the back anyways but if you plan on attaching ruffle to yours you can extend the line upward and create a shoulder that then you end up joining this together but let's do that so that it's, it's just even if i'm not attaching ruffle to ours it just makes it uniform you know so you want to make use of the same measurement so that when you're sewing um your sewing is well balanced so now i'm connecting my marking this way and we have the rest of the dots which will be cut out here we have the pattern for the back piece and these three for the front piece including the collar now I'll be placing this on fabric and we can transfer these patterns to fabric. Now for the collar, I want to slash it a little bit just so it relaxes properly at the back. So nothing too major, but I'll just come outward by half an inch at the parts I'm attaching to the back neckline and I'll just create a straight line there and slash. So basically this is just slash and spray technique, right? so that the, the back neckline remains the same, but you have a little bit more fullness here. So I'm just spreading by like half an inch and we'll be good with that. Now there are two ways to go about this. You may want here to be on fold or you may want to cut separate pieces, but I've decided to leave mine on fold like this. So I'll be cutting with my seam allowance half an inch, half an inch, half an inch. Let's do this. So even on even on fold, you need two pieces, okay? You need a piece as the lining or the facing of your collar, and then you need the main piece. At this stage, just to go ahead and iron in fusible interfacing on your collar. Now take a look at this. I have two pieces, like I mentioned. Now don't forget to put your notch, this notch. This notch right here, I will rearrange this and place mine appropriately so that I know exactly where I should, you know, when you know where you are sewing. Sometimes you can't really tell if you have 
or match the two pieces but this will help you match color to the main bodies now i want to cut out a facing for this and because i don't want my facing to be in pieces i taped back the back pattern and somewhere here there's really no um, universal measurement for the length of a facing but this is what i'll be using to cut out the back facing i'll place this on fabric right now and cut out the facing now for the front as well we have a facing you can either make use of this entire piece but whatever you do make sure that you're using a good fabric for your facing and remember that this part is going to expose whatever you have inside so your facing has to be maybe a matching fabric or the same fabric you know to make it look really nice for your facing as well you can make use of this entire panel and just cut out this shape even if you're going to use lining you still need the facing especially for the front because of this part that will be coming out soon this is for the front i added half an inch seam allowance everywhere aside from the side seam where i added one inch the same thing goes for this side but there's no side seam here so we have half an inch all round sorry about the noise guys in case you can hear that so if you want your outfit to come out firm and all that and you're going to line this so you can afford to put fitable interfacing everywhere otherwise you can just add your fitable interfacing to the facing alone so because of the facing i now have four pieces for this two for each side of the body now let's move on to the back the back and then here is the other side of the back I added half an inch allowance everywhere and one inch at the side and for this half an inch everywhere including the neckline and then we have the collar here I placed the notch at that point where I asked you to place the notch and all right here also here's the facing for the back I'll be attaching this after I've sewn these two pieces together and it's meant to just sit right into here to close up the neckline after collar attachment now we'll be moving on to the sewing process for this. Now let me quickly walk you through the sewing process. So first I will start by sewing the main fabric. Now not the facing, the main fabric. Okay, so we have one for each side of the body here. I'll be sewing by half an inch. Sewing the side panel to the center panel by the same allowance half an inch i'll do that on both sides now now that is done this is my seam line okay and i see by half an inch you can go ahead to place notches along here so that it relaxes properly now if you will not be making use of a lining this is the part where you go and overlock this seam line before the next step now i'll set this aside and We'll be doing the same thing to the back, joining the two panels together by half an inch. Now here are our front pieces and this is what we'll have at the end of the day. Remember we have like a complete overlap sort of. So you can see that the two matches up. So before we continue with the next I'm going to join the front and the back piece together along the shoulder line and I'll be sewing, this is the shoulder, okay, I'll be sewing the two together by half an inch along the shoulder. So we are doing main fabric to main fabric, not the lining, okay, so, sorry, not the facing, we are sewing by half an inch. So now I have sewn this together by half an inch on both shoulder you also need to sew the back together by that half an inch if for adventure you plan on attaching a zip to the back you don't want it at the side you want it at the back so what you do is sew, still sew here a little bit and stop so that the rest will be your zip opening because of this wrap your head won't have issue passing through the neckline the space we left out for the neckline here and you'll still be good so I'll just go ahead and sew here a little bit by like two, three inches downward and I will stop. So here we have it. I have joined the back pieces together. 
Now I'll pick up the facing for the front and the facing for the back and we're going to do a little work on them. So here's the facing for the back. Here is the facing for the front. So I'll be sewing this together from the neckline, okay, not on this edge. From the neckline, I'll be joining these two together by half an inch. Right side facing the right side. Note that this is for demonstrative purpose, that's why I didn't make use of any interfacing and I just made use of this plain facing. And even on the collar as well, I'm just sewing the plain fabrics together. This is just for demonstrative purpose, it's not an actual outfit that we are making. Okay, so now let's move on to the collar. This is the part of the collar that we are attaching to the outfit. So we need to close off this upper part and also the side. Then we'll go ahead to fix this on the neck line. Okay, so I'm sewing this way by half an inch and bringing it down. Now here is the collar. I went ahead, turned it inside out and I pressed it, trimmed off the seam allowances and this is what we have. Now I'm checking the notch to ensure that it's truly the middle of a um, collar. And now we'll come back to the main fabric, not the facing, and we want to attach the collar now to this. So remember that we have a notch at the center. I'll position this notch at the center back. So you may want to first hold them hold together with pins before you go ahead to sew. I will be sewing together by half an inch. That's the collar on the neckline of the main fabric. So guys, here is the collar we just fixed. I will mention again guys, please overlock your shoulder line, the dart line. Like I said, this is not for any use, okay? <laughs> this is just for demonstrative purpose. This fabric is not going to be used. It won't be part of any particular outfit. I'm just recreating this for teaching purpose because some of you requested for it. So here's the collar and I just want to try to make this fast. So this video can come up on time. That's why I'm not overlooking. Okay, so here is the collar and we still have our back back piece. Sorry, our back piece and the front piece right here. So now we want to close up the seam along the collar, along the neckline actually. Okay, so this is our neckline. I hope this is not confusing anybody. This is what we have so far. So we just want to close up that seam using the facing. Remember that we have prepared our facing right here already. Now I'll just place the right side over the right side, the right side of the facing over the right side of the main fabric with the collar in between. What we are doing is we are sandwiching the collar in between the fabric and the facing. So I won't just stop at the collar, we extend it through the edge to the edge of the lapel to completely close up this part of the neckline. We are sewing by half an inch again. We are just trying to replicate the seam we have there already. Once again, you can start by pinning and pinning and pinning again. Okay, I just realized I actually turned this the wrong way, so I need to redo this before going ahead to sew. But let's use this side for demonstration. So from the neckline, I'll be sewing by half an inch till I get to the tip of the lapel, okay? Now I'm done closing up the raw seams at the neckline. I want to go ahead to give this a good press before we we'll continue, but this is what we have here. Here's what our piece looks like so far, and this is the front. This, this is another front, okay? So it's all coming together. Now what we want to do is to close up the wrap part of this piece. And we are sewing from the inside once again. So we are basically sewing the facing and the main fabric together along this wrap neckline from the inside by half an inch. I will repeat the process for the other side. Now I'm giving this a press along the seam we just made. That's here, the wrap part of the neckline. 
what i want to do next is to join the sides together guys we're almost through with this so we are sewing the side seams together by the same allowance which is one inch from the wrong side of course so there's no lining to join to line in here it's just this is just fabric to fabric so this is what you would do exactly this way without lining if you're making like a simple um should i call it english wear corporate wear that you don't want to add lining to so i'm sewing along the side seam by one inch i'll repeat the process on the other side our side seam is sewn in place and we just need to press our jacket together so by eventually you're making it into a dress then you go ahead and you know place one side over the other let's say this uh -huh. press properly here is our side seam here here is the side seam for this side so place it properly then please go and press your collar to match with the other so you need to arrange the one underneath first and then the one above okay then you place it this way give it a good press before you go ahead to attach the skirt or whatever you're attaching them so i'm taking this piece to my ironing table giving it a good press and i'll show you guys the final piece